Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Just one. Can I put the two here? Yeah. And I just okay. So, so the title uh, I give the title, but an explanation for the title. So, the notion of uncertainty uh, in the treatment of mathematical equations, such as that of a Hulst. But I do. I don't do it uh, for for free. I mean, uh, not gratis rodeo. Uh, it is in view of an evolutionary status of mathematical modeling since uh, 1830. Since uh, 1838, 1838 is when Verhulst gave this equation for the first time, and specifically from a mathematical point of view. I will have to. To be precise on what I mean by mathematical point of view, I will speak about epidemiology, I will speak about various uh, models, but I look at it from the mathematical point of view, and which gives me the possibility to have a critique from other domains. But if I want to uh, present completely what it is meant on a mathematical point of view, I have to. I am obliged to remember that in mathematics, you can speak of uh, a cheese, but you don't speak of its taste. You speak of its length, uh, at all. Uh, if it's thick or not, it is solid or not, that's a rule. Unfortunately, perhaps, but that's a rule. So uh, now let's uh, see. Uh, I would also like to, to be, uh, whoop. Or something? No. Why not? Uh, the thing is, I would like to to give to provide a, a history of the equation, which seems a little bit ridiculous, uh, but uh, to see how critics within the mathematical circles, somewhere else, uh, as well, be, uh, built something completely new. And uh, it is not often told that within mathematics, even when you say you apply mathematics or you use mathematics, there can be mathematical critiques independent on the quantities, on the objects on which you are traveling, and that's Will uh, I'll show you uh, how it works with the Verhulst equation? Will lead to uh, things like the the butterfly effect or uh, chaos theory. Let's. Uh, I, I don't want to speak too much. I will essentially use graphics to make me precise. So my first uh, my first thing is, if you think of here, is a typical example. Uh, it is not of the Verrall's equation, but it is not something coming from mathematics. This is something which is computed from experiments. Biomass, the phytoplankton, en milligrammes par litre. Uh, I don't care too much of what you, you find on the abscissa or on the audience. That's, I don't care. This is a behavior, a behavior of something, you, whatever, uh, which you can describe. I mean, this is mathematics, if you like, but in fact, we can use better. And that's, I'm almost using the wording by Verhulst in uh, 1838. Uh, the form taken by the graph of a certain solution of an equation. There is a beginning. Of rapid growth. In fact, an exponential one, I meaning it is precise, being reduced to an oblique a straight line. You see it? In fact, which acts as a tangent for the change of curvature. That is there is an inflection point, clear? Followed by an asymptotic phase towards a constant. Uh, you may say, and this is 
or, or to the usual uh, description, it is an S curve. But I prefer I prefer to say an integral curve with an S. It is an S, or you may say it uh, uh, various letters in various forms. But you, the the mathematics, the graphic, adds nothing. Adds nothing to this. Now you may say that this is a graphic of this kind, with an idea of this kind, which led. Verhulst uh, to find his equation. This, I think, is a wrong assumption. That I want to prove it, that it is wrong. It's far easier, by the way, for mathematicians to prove something wrong than to prove something true. So, <laughs> excuse me, another another drawing, clear, the same kind. You find it in in a different uh, uh, situation. Now, what I want to say. In 38, 1838, do you remember having read the graph of a function? Could you give me an example by Euler of the graph of a function? By Lagrange? By Cauchy? Okay. Try, fine, no. There are curves, they are not functions. And it is clearly said. That is, in fact, I think I found, but, but I speak graph of a function, okay? No, it's, I'm very, and I don't claim that function is not defined, graph of a function. So we have to be uh, rather precise on that. So I think I found, perhaps somebody will, will find around the same years, I'll find uh, perhaps the first appearance of the graph of functions, and you see the S is important, that is of a family of functions, not one function alone. Uh, it is by an engineer, Leo Lalanne. So you see, to the right, there is Leon Lalanne. Lalanne was a member of the French Academy of Science in the 70s, is a, an interesting person on a political point of view because it was linked with the French, the second French Revolution in 1848, condemned uh, to things with, well, it, it is an interesting person. Then he became a typical politician of the Third Republic, uh, good, the franc maçon bourgeois, etc., etc. Et so what's the year of this graph? This one is 1843. And uh, it is in fact, uh, uh, use it in a book on meteorology, it's important, this fact that uh, this kind of thing came from a domain in which everybody in the 19th century is that something which is unpredictable is weather. So a mathematical object came from where it is unpredictable, which I like. So, but look, where does it come from? It comes from, and I give, I give you the drawing, here is it. It's beautiful, completely unuseful, completely. It gives an abscissa, you put months. On uh, uh, the um, uh, ordinates, sorry. You put days, 30 days in a month. Uh -huh. And what you put, the line you see, is the line where you join points which have the same temperature. So, I mean, try, this is not a function. This is beautiful, okay, okay. But it means nothing. At the same time, uh, it is a representation of that. That was not done by uh, Lalade. That came from Kemp, uh, who was a very good uh, meteorologist who published in German. It was translated into French two years afterwards. And you have this thing, uh, you see, uh, the month and the, the days, but think of it. The notion, the graph came from an, some, something which, I, which is drawn here. We have a name for it today, Abacus. Clear. But the name Abacus for that, I mean, never came before the 20th century. And what is here 
Yes. You exactement. Mais 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 ce qui est c'est c'était tout nouveau. It was completely new. And from something which I mean, you see there are surfaces you cut surfaces by temperature. It's clear what they're doing. But then it was transformed. He invented this. I mean, you see, which is a cut. This is nothing else. But then. Once he had that, he organized the whole thing by defining a function, a graph of a function, saying that it is a good representation for certain phenomena, forgetting the fact that the, the drawing was completely unuseful. Now, uh, think of it, the graph of a function uh, comes from that. We, we, we have the impression, oh, it's not true. I mean, with Leibniz uh, differential, you should construct uh, uh, the graph of a function according to Rawls rule or whatever you may think of. No, it was not. This was something else. They constructed curves. And so now I have to, well, to read, because this is, in, this, I think, I, I have it translated into English. So Lalanne claims that what he has done uh, is really very well known, which is generally a good way when you do something new to claim it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's old. So it's I read the I read it. So 1843, the construction of a plane of plane curves. That is a graph. The construction of plane curves has long been successfully, successfully employed to represent the mutual dependence which may exist between two variable quantities. Everybody thinks that's extremely well known. Try to find examples. Before, the determination of a curve this kind is easily done. One counts on a straight line starting from a fixed point, lengths proportional to the arbitrary value which one gives to one of the two quantities. Pay attention. He uses temperature. Do you think uh, temperature is a quantity? And this is a good idea. Um, from the extremity of either of these lines, one carries parallel to a direction making a certain angle with the first of a length proportional to the corresponding values of the other variable. But then a continuous line, then a continuous line is passed through the extremities of this series of straight lines sufficiently close together. So you have representation of the graph of a function, but you add something. You have numerical values, discrete numerical values for sure. But then you extend, you consider that the graph you have have a property. It's just say, we, we may say continuous interpolation, just say continuous lines. That is what I suggest is as very often in mathematics, when you don't have a clear definition of what a function is. There is no clear definition of what a function is in uh, 38. You have good, good definition, but the, the one to, which is waited for is the one by Cantor in 1873. Uh, a function is a correspondence between a given set, another set and a correspondence on which you say nothing. Okay, so here he is uh, rather clever to 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 I mean, to to claim that there is behind the concept of function something which now for us is obvious: classes of functions, continuity, derivability, whatever you may think, measurability, whatever. That is, you you have to qualify, and this is what I try in the setting of constructing a concept. I mean, you have ideas of functionalities which are hidden, not clearly expressed. And this is far long ago. I mean, I could, but this is, uh, I have no time to do that, but think of the way Leibniz introduced uh, in the most series of manuscripts, De Functionibus, when he introduced that in uh, 1673, uh, 
it's, it doesn't give a definition. It just says there is a curve. Oh, no, it's not a mere curve. It's a curve represented in Cartesian axis. I mean, it is represented, you have X and Y, and you know what they are. And a function is something which helps you to construct, to, to work on the curve. That is, you may consider, it gives a very good example of the subtangent that you may express the subtangent at a point x, y on the curve in terms of x and y. You cannot express, express it as y is equal to f of x. You have something in terms of x and y. So that's very, uh, very tricky, the way. Yeah. No, 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 that's it. No, that's it. I, I take the manuscript. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Not, not, not everything. It is, it is what you may express in terms of ethics of Y for the curve. They, they are not expressed. The language of the function is not expressed for a function. Oh, yes. Yeah, but, but pay attention. Function. A function of what? No, no, but they pay attention. A function of what? The subtangent that occur of x and y, not of x or not of y. That's the point. Okay? So this is precisely. I try to put a surroundings, a sort of an environment to the idea of a function, however precise or imprecise it is, that uh, using a functionality, there is a kind of functionality, which is, yes, you may have an instrument in terms of x of y helping you to construct the curve. So one thing. So now, going back to where I started from, that is, uh, uh, you may say that the graph and the construction of a graph, the way Lalanne did it, is another way, another functionality. You see, it's not a logical, clear cut definition, but it helps to do. But you may have, and uh, you may have a very, a very different, a very different thing. So let me, uh, where do I have put the Verrall equation? Sorry, here it is. I forgot to give you the Verrall's equation, but uh, I suppose it's no problem. You have a, now we may say you have something X depending on time and which is equal. So you have the derivative, we say the derivative and it is correct. The X of a DT is uh, R is a coefficient, X times one minus X of a K. Now I'm trying to find a second, uh, line of inspiration for Verhulst. You know, perhaps I, I, the first one I say it's not clear, but the second perhaps might be more precise, that in fact, uh, Verhulst, and he says it, which is almost said in an Aristotelian way, that is, well, the derivative of what I'm looking at, which is a local thing. The derivative is, expressed by two terms. I don't want to turn it to biology. I don't, two terms, opposite. One term is proportional to X, one term is proportional, but with a minus before, up to a coefficient. And clearly, it was, uh, it was very interesting for, oh, sorry, for him to look at where it's before. There is a beautiful example there is a beautiful example of when you think of it, when the two, this is a derivative. The derivative is exactly well dispersed into two equal, well, it's perfectly, perfectly regular. So now you understand, how, so that's when it is equal. I mean, uh, when I say using a, a sort of description by Aristotle, that is a mediocritas. You have two, two effects. You don't know where, where you take you between being rich and being poor. You are in the middle. But in, the, in mathematics, you have to be more precise to be equal. The effects, okay? Now, for Ferrell's, it goes 
further. That is where do I have? Ooh, ooh, I, sorry, I, I have two drawings who disappeared. Oh, sorry. Perhaps it's just before. Where I, where I, where I went too quick, but this was to avoid. Up, 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 up. Sorry, no, I, they are disappeared. You may think this, sorry, I disappeared. You know, this thing here, very regular. But uh, it is very regular when you take the equality k, depending on the coefficient. Think of it. This curve is not one curve. There is a coefficient k, which is important. And if you change k, the form of the curve is almost the same, except that it gives you a lot of possibilities. That is, the, the main thing is uh, the idea of functionality here is you choose among a family of curves. So, okay, let's see, and uh, to be, to speak very quickly, well, it is exactly that which is being done in statistical inference. When you want to, you have a parameter and you want to determine it and you choose uh, maximum likelihood and so on. So uh, I, I want to go uh, further uh, in, in this kind of reflection now. Think of it. This idea of having a curve, a function. If I take, I, ta I just translated uh, a later, and the later is in French by Leibniz to Huygens on the 25th of July, 1690, uh, exactly. And that, uh, I think, uh, a sort of publish, a publication, it's the first time that it is spoken of equation differentiale. <coughs> by, by, the expression is by Leibniz, okay? He gives it, he gives the, uh, the, the value of, you may see how it works. You may see, I think I've given, no. Uh, okay, now pay attention. Uh, it is for a cycloid. You may think that it is obvious. Where is the variable and where is the ordinate? Y of X, which is not true. Because here you change the variable. When you have a differential equation, you seem to have Y of X clear, but when you solve it, sometimes it's X of Y that you solve. And sometimes you cannot solve it. You have to solve X in terms of a parameter T and Y in terms of a parameter T. You want a proof? Easy, Descartes is perfect in that. When you look at a cycloid by Descartes, it is in a letter. I took it in the Latin, Latin version, whatever, but you may see, you see the cycloid up something which has, it does that. It cannot be represented by a function quite clear. Now in Descartes, I took Adjkuyus, Trochoidis, Tangentes, Inveniendas, and so on, on the left. You see that it is not a function? Look at A. A, the curve is going, growing, but to the left towards B, and then going back to D. So you don't have a function. What Leibniz did, this is very clever. This is what we know too uh, when we work with a differential equation without thinking of it. It's, it's part of the practice. But what he did is he changed. He took, instead of taking x and y, it takes y in, in x. That is, it takes a vertical as a variable. Very clever. So uh, he knows clearly what he wants. He knows what we may say it is a function except that it doesn't say it. Well, that's, I call it a certain kind of functionality. Uh, I have five, good. Uh, that's, that's work. More than five. Oh no, good, too much. Uh, so I, I, gave you, I gave you the figure because I like it very much. Uh, this is something you don't find uh, very early. I haven't, I haven't found a, uh, a drawing like that. You know, this is an extended, what we call the generalized uh, cycloid. That is, you take a circle. Yes, you see the circle, a small one. Oh, yeah, there's only one circle, but it is rather small. Uh -huh. And you take a point, the circle is uh, rolling without uh, friction, uh, rolling on a straight line, horizontal line. Then you take a point outside the circle. 
it's uh, it's very practical. Take you know on a railways, okay? You have a, the wheel of a railway. There is a little bit something. So the curve which is described is that kind. It is not a function. And a good example. Counterexamples in mathematics can work against the creation of a concept. It is not uh, uh, what Bachelard says about epistemological uh, blockade or whatever. It's something different. It is people are clearly aware there is a difficulty. They don't solve it, but there is a difficulty. And here, the fact that Descartes drew the thing is for me very, uh, rather important. Now, uh, what I want to say now, very quickly, a third, a third thing. Perhaps first, as many others before, thought that they could find a law of nature. That is, there was a biological law of nature having two opposite effects on a derivative, okay? Well, uh, have, you, have we example of sort of law of na nature for it? And what does it, how, uh, what does it give in terms of mathematics? Well, I took the way you construct a logarithm, a table of logarithm by Napier is having the property of f of square root of x, y, x, y are uh, positive quantities, positive numbers is uh, the arithmetic mean of f of x of f of y of y. That is, yes, there is a law of nature. Well, you know that the first uses of the terms law of nature is in trig trigonometric books by the 16th century, sinus a plus b is equal to so and so on, a law of nature, law of uh, mathematical nature, perhaps, or whatever you may think of, or law of astronomy, if you like. But then logarithm is as well. Now, you may say that there is a way towards function, uh, in the creation of function. This is a Bobakist point of view. I say it as a third one. I didn't, didn't claim that's how it was done. The Bobakist point of view is, in fact, function satisfying characteristic laws that is satisfying, you may say algebraic, you may say if you want to use another term, which is a, in the language of the theory of category morphism, that's you have from the very beginning, this functionality, then something which uh, is around the idea of function, trying to find in the structure itself. So I just give you two things here. I mean, if you want to find the solution of uh, the exponential uh, equation, uh, you can use it, you can use uh, the, just a very simple functional equation, which, so the functional equation is phi of x plus y is phi x phi y, clear? A sum is transformed into a product. Now, if you, uh, you can also look at the function, the equation f of x plus y again equal f of x plus f of y, then you can prove easily, ah, uh ah, -huh. axiom of choice. Now, you can prove rather easily, well, uh -huh. 1905, that uh, uh, the, uh, the exponential function is, uh, yeah, the, the solution is exponential composed with the f, f being any additive function on R. Question, are there many additive functions on R? Awfully many, not only awfully many, but uh, this is the Hamel basis and so on and so on. But you may prove that when you add any kind of regularity on f, you have only a solution f of x is ax. So you may say additive function uh, are strictly unuseful. Very quickly, that a morphism, morphism of R are unuseful. You are just looking at continuous or whatever. Oh, and you're wrong. Take R, locally compact group, 
take the discrete topology, take the uh, the function, uh, the, the additive function, uh, you have and put a very simple topology on it, and you have the Bohr group. Everybody uh, may think that it is unuseful. This gives you the almost periodic functions, and this gives you a pure, a wonderful uh, theory uh, of, on locally compact group. It is very well explained by Andre Veil in the Integration of the Group Topology 1940. So what I say is from uh, various points of, uh, as points of view, they are not clear points of view. From various intuitions, no, intuition is not. From various functionalities, you go to diverse, diverse creation. So the, if you go that, like that, and I, I finish in time, I hope. Now, this was a, a critique I would like uh, very quick. You take another, another thing, another table of numbers. It was done by Pearl in 19, 1927. You can, re, you, that is a problem of curve fitting. Do you, are you sure that there is only one curve corresponding to a certain table of numbers? The answer is, and this is, you cannot read it very seriously, but here is four completely different forms of the of a function, which satisfies precisely the tables you have before. There is no uniqueness. So uh, if you think on your table of numbers that there is a law of nature, it is expressed by completely different things. Uh -huh. So this is, and once you have understood that, now I give you the last thing. Uh, it is rather using the variance equation plus you add something more. Uh, you get to the Lorentz attractor very easily in the sense that is going back to trying to unify what I said. I mean, the importance I said from the beginning this is not one function you have to consider. This is a function with a parameter. The idea of a function with a parameter is an idea from Leibniz, he explains it. Not only that, but the parameter, he claims that you can work on the parameter as if it was a variable. I mean, as if it was a geometric variable. Okay, it gives a, a, a determination of the envelopes and so on and so on. Now, if you add the terms to a certain differential equation very close, you obtain the Lorentz attractor, and then, strange enough, something very simple. Variance equation is very simple. Then you see that there is a dependence from the condition, the limit condition, so that you have, with the parameters, a zone uh, of the parameters when you have chaos. Here is an example, uh, I think I, and I finish on this, uh, very simple things. This very simple mechanical system, you have, well, you see, the string, the point, it, it, it gives chaos. It was the, fir the first chaos being proved after uh, Poincaré, uh, but uh, it was, and it was done by Yves Rocard, who is a, a French physicist, and he obtained the uh, classical Feigenbaum uh, picture. So uh, simplicity in the equations is not an assurance of good, simple, of a, uh, easy results. That's it. Is that what I wanted to know? So function, which seems for us so simple, results from various, various uh, ideas which had their extension, independent, if, if one, we, or we may say the, the thing in the following way, or in fact, Cantor, which is perfect, a definition is the less interesting part of function, except that is the one that we learn and with good reasons uh, at, at school, okay? So it's also a way of describing the development of mathematics. Thank you. <laughs> So, okay, Carlos, and maybe we can have. Uh,
is that an element? Well, thank you very much, John. And from the set of the video question, let me put it in the open terms. I will make myself a question, but once, because uh, I love what you said. What you said, and uh, I, I may put it in the following terms. Many of uh, which are here among us have uh, given lectures on mathematics. We are all the, we are already uh, many of us have uh, taught uh, theory of functions, and we have used uh, several expressions. We talk about functions, continuous functions. And variables, etc. And so I, 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 I want to ask a question for this. How many of uh, you who are here, who are here uh, have ever, when we talk about the variation of the, the function of a variable, and let's say a continuous function, okay? Uh, how many of us think, not if they say, as a matter, but how many of us think of this variable, let's say variable point, as something that is somehow moving? I always say, I not complain, I never see the point moving. I never see the point. <laughs> but moving. I'm talking about the point, not about the part. No, not I'm, I'm talking about, as you started your lecture today about the mathematical object, not the physical object. So uh, I, I think how many of us, when we talk about a, a variable, we think about something that is moving uh, within a set, within a space, within a Cartesian space, and. Uh, I think that even now, after Euler, after Lagrange, after Kant, we have somehow many different ways to think which are completely mixed. I can wonder that maybe in the 18th century that it was much more. Exactly. That's it. I, I, I don't know if my question was to No, no, say that. But, can I can I add one for a, a, a thought experiment for you? Suppose I have a, I have a phenomenon for coming from physics, which tells me that from given data I have a certain number of coefficients uh, given by experiments. I'm sure of it. It's a thought experiment, okay? Uh, of that I am sure that what I'm looking for, the phenomenon, is being one root of the polynomial, which I may construct with the constant, so a k x power k, and so on, equals zero, and then one root. And I may claim I'm a good physicist, which is not true, I'm a good physicist, and then I will consider this root as a function Okay, of AKs. Lagrange could have done that. Laplace, which is a big mistake. We know that from Galois theory. We know that, yes, yes, we know, coach, yes, you're right. We know that the dependence of roots towards coefficients is a question of field, the field generated by the roots and the field uh, generated by the coefficients. And you could give, and I have examples. Uh, so my thought experience with good reasons, good conscious, not enough clarity about what a function is, but things seems almost clear, obvious, adapted for everyone, you may give very bad proofs. And I have an, so I have an example of somebody who proved the fundamental theorem of algebra by a reasoning of that kind. That's it, I, I obtained the result. So you see, uh, I, what I want, and it's also what you said, 
that uh, or we have too much the idea that in the past mathematicians worked as if it, in front of them everything was clear uh, everything was uh, so we see perhaps better well we see better because of what they done did that's a problem but at the same time they had doubts they had they were skeptics as well and a part not all a part of, of uh, history of mathematics seems to me to try to uh, to uh, to lift up the curtains uh, to see behind the scene uh, not uh, well to see behind the scenes which is uh, very often interesting and what i did was i was forgetting completely uh, biology or not that it is wrong that uh, you have to take care of it, but you have also to consider that there is a, a sort of structural way of behaving of mathematics, which in itself, it's nothing to with Plato or whatever, in itself has a certain way of reaching truth and making mistakes as well. Thank you. Okay. Yes, my friend. Yeah. So, we are looking at the morning set.